The other day, I made a video talking about another piece of content from Nate Smitty on YouTube. It led me down a rabbit hole of his content. I love commentary videos on Call of Duty. I really do. It's one of my favorite things to watch. I found a video that is honestly so laughable in certain aspects. I felt like I needed to react to it before I finished watching it because the last time this happened, well, you saw what happened. Either way, let's go ahead and dive in. You've probably heard European Warzone players say their servers are harder, and you've probably also heard North American players say the same. But which Warzone yeah. servers are actually harder? As an NA player, I decided to play on EU server. My boy out here with 69 wins dropping commentaries on which servers are harder i'm not like he's got a 1.65 kd i'm not talking smack or anything this doesn't even t put you in the like top percent to be making decisions you could have the data but i'm just throwing that I out decided there. to play on eu servers for the past couple of days and what i found out was actually really surprising but when he says eu servers is he saying he's using like express vpn or nord vpn to actually be in those servers or is he talking about using something like no lag vpn or sbmm off or whatever the heck they are that basically just gives you better ping and puts you in the closest lobbies to you that's a different thing before we uncover that we need to go back in order to make sense of everything we know okay. that most eu players come from the united kingdom while na players right. obviously come from the US. Assuming the harder servers clearly have the best players when comparing the top 100 UK I mean, and US players, <laughs> look, the US is just out here, you know, in terms of wins and kills. We can see that the That's US pride, is dominant baby. in both areas. However, at, the hey, UK hold on. Do you see that? Look at look at cute little J device right here. Look at this. Oh, kills. There's, can, there's Yeet, there's Iron, there's OP Mark. The there's J device, baby. How you doing, guys? They're looking areas. cutest. However, the UK is just one country in the EU region and yeah. many others. Although the UK might have more players, the top 100 players from Germany are actually God better. Dang. Even though server this dude's got 3,600 wins, people, it doesn't seem to be an issue at having less better players. We actually see this in Overwatch, where the most popular servers are from the US. Overwatch and fans come from all over the world. Of course, the country with the highest number of Overwatch players in 2022 is the US, 25% of the total. Another 8% come from Russia, 7% from Brazil, 5% from the United Kingdom, and 5.3% from Germany. I mean, that's a big difference in percentage though, but it's more tailored towards the US. In Russia, but the truly best players are from Korea as they're the ones undefeated in most Dude, Korea goes hard. Now, you can look at the top earners or champions of Warzone competitions and you'll see it's mostly dominated by US players. Okay, but it's always gonna be US. That's the big thing is it's always gonna be US based players. In most cases, it's US based tournaments. Like that's just the truth of it. Of course, they do have EU tournaments, but in most cases, they're not for as much money, which well, is kind of weird. but most of these events are geared towards entertainment. But it's just less players and less people watching. Content creators that the majority is watching as opposed to who's truly Nah, this is World Series of Warzone. Now, having statistically better players or also have y'all been seeing all the like cod pros versus like warzone pros smack talking and stuff like that and the warzone pros like absolutely dominated the cod pros and people out here saying everybody's champions cheating. on your servers could make it more difficult but these stats in terms of wins and kills could mean something or nothing at all if you take yeah. a closer look at the top players on na and eu servers you'll see that the list is filled with countless countless cheaters oh my gosh there's pipe that's crazy we, uh, picnic unbelievable oh bobby pop what a cheater youngsters ugh. No, i'm totally just kidding these are these are like actually good players now you're probably thinking that the anti-cheat would have banned them before reaching these high numbers but yeah. this is actually a really common problem for the warzone leaderboards cheaters will find a way to put their names at the I top i don't even so understand it the sales of their own i don't know how that's not actively products. being so removed like that should be someone's job every day server on leaderboards alone is really risky as we don't know how many players are actually good or just closet cheaters yeah, in disguise. True, also, true. most people don't even play on their own servers as getting a VPN is so- This is what I was talking about earlier. Again, the reality is it's actually just giving you better ping. There's a likelihood you get easier lobbies when you're playing with the server that's right beside you because it's based on skill. It's based on engagement. It's trying to keep you engaged. You break that and then you always get lobbies based on what's closest to you. It could be a high KD lobby. It could be a low KD lobby. You'll probably get a high KD lobby. Some people get lucky because they're in a, a place that has lower KD players. If you're in India and you like VPN to India, then you're probably going to get some bots because that's statistically the lowest KD area. I think it, actually I might be lying to you and i'm not like talking trash or anything i'm literally saying statistically i'm sure there's absolute demons over there this is not what no lag vpn does and it's so wild seeing people that just don't know anything about it just talk out of their butt they don't understand it you could be a european assuming american servers are easy while you're actually just playing against other europeans with a vpn and this goes with you have to have something like nord vpn or express vpn or an, a vpn like that that'll put you in a literal different country not something that's just meant to lower your ping and 
connect you to the closest lobby. Not if it makes any sense because it doesn't actually do what it says it does. It's very weird that they advertise it the way that they do because it's not what it does. I mean, even the content creators don't even play on their own servers as they're whitelisted by Activision, meaning Activision will give them easier servers in what? both NA and EU countries. Brother, in what world? This is like some conspiracy theory type stuff, bro. This is what, bro, I like, look, look, it's hard by bad boy beaming, what? The whitelist doesn't exist in that way. From what I've been told from multiple, multiple people, if these streamers can go still get shadow banned, then the whitelist doesn't exist because the shadow bans wouldn't happen. You're seeing people still get shadow banned to this day that are the top creators. Yes they can reach out to the influencer relations people and see if they'll help them out. From the conversation I've had with influencer relations, they get annoyed when they have to deal with that because it's like, all right, you're just gonna have to wait it out, bro. You, you got reported like 10 times. Yes, they will whitelist you to ensure that you can get in tournaments, but they will not whitelist you so you get easy lobbies. If they do, then it's so far above like the creators, we wouldn't even know about it because they wouldn't tell us. That is not something that we are aware exists. And if anybody said different, they did it for clout and you can't change my mind. That way they can better promote the game by showing moments. That is so crazy, what? Exclusively. Yeah, uh, listen, I will say swag of all people, nothing bad to say about the guy. Met him at TwitchCon, super new, nice dude. I've hopped into like two lobbies with swag ever. And it's not like we were like buddy, buddy, like shaking hands, being on the same team and stuff. No, we hopped into a lobby, it was against swag. Easy slob has ever had in my entire life don't know what happened <laughs> that is the only information i have any other content creator never had that problem so that only really leaves us with one other option to know if we're truly playing against na or eu players and it actually comes from one of the reasons why we enjoy playing the game so much uh -huh. come on get us the win here vibe with you oh, oh. oh. well playing on eu servers what? i could tell my lobbies were authentic because of this Okay, so the good thing is, as you can see in the and top honestly, left, it says 125 so things. So this is real EU servers. Difficult. The players were a lot more coordinated and aggressive in terms of play style. So this made me play a lot less aggressive. And I yeah, we're just kind of pieces of trash in, in America. We can't moving communicate as fast properly. As I do, I ended up getting super frustrated as I was losing most of my gunfights. It actually got so bad. I ended up just spending most of my time just hot micing most of the players. And then I basically told my team I was just going to start solo pushing because I literally just felt so useless. But the crazy part is that as soon as I switched up my play style and started playing super aggressive the servers became significantly easier and at what? first it didn't really make sense because just a little while ago i was struggling really badly until i realized the answer had been right in front of me this whole time my ping while playing on eu servers was perfect what it's per at 117 milliseconds you think it's perfect high to the point where i was rubber banding but it was just high enough where i was able to get peekers advantage with pretty much every kill as long as oh, I right. for those of you who oh, don't know what peekers advantage is it's pretty much an advantage from high ping that interesting allows you to see the enemy before they see you and one of the guys i was playing with from you actually she told me this and i was a little skeptical how big the difference was because i was pretty that, much no, but but no that makes sense because like that's what happened with fifa kill on a lot of these like big tournaments is that he was able to get that advantage and take care of business simply because of stuff like that don't get me wrong he's easily like one of the best players in the world like has been for years with things like that at your advantage i absolutely agree because that's another thing with like aim assist because of certain server latency with aim assist you'll get these bullets that'll basically like go into the enemy regardless of whether or not you're right on target because aim assist will actually track for the server not track for what you're tracking but if i'm on mouse and keyboard and i have raw input i'm going to be shooting where the player should be on my screen or like slightly ahead of them and it won't hit because that's not where they're actually at due to the distance between you and the server so yeah that, i mean that makes a lot of sense make a video on how easy eu servers are until we switched over and I actually got humbled really quickly. As soon as we switched over to my, dang, my servers, boy. the EU players started playing how I did on their servers and they actually ended up out fragging me most games. That's if it wasn't for this EU player, I'm I would have totally had the mindset of most NA players on EU Look servers. at his ping. My boy got 15 ping. Good Lord. And, vice versa. and to be completely honest, NA players are still right. EU servers are significantly easier, but the same also goes for EU players and NA servers. Yeah. This is because of the high ping advantage and if you're able to change your play style accordingly, the posing server will be significantly It's so easier. interesting so how that works though. For People have always said the posing servers are so much easier. And by the way, this is something that started in Modern Warfare 3. If you had higher ping, you'd actually get more of an advantage because before that, if you were on low ping, you'd get more of an advantage. But Modern Warfare 3, lag compensation. That's what it is. It's lag compensation. It's built to make the game easier for you if you have a higher ping. It's super weird and it's super sus that that is even a thing, but it's been a thing since Modern Warfare 3.
easier. But the extent of advantages to playing on servers from different regions actually goes further. Have you ever wondered why some streamers play mostly in the morning? It's because most of the time you get easier lobbies. Absolutely. That's because little kids hop on in the morning while most sweats hop on in the afternoon. No. It's not because little kids are on. It's because, you know, grandpa and his, it, like everybody that doesn't have to work. You know, kids are literally at school during the morning. I don't, I don't know who's like smoking the crack right here, but kids are at school. And if they're not at school, they're probably not playing Call of Duty. You're playing against like a dad who just got like a little bit of time to hop on at like 7 a.m. And because you're on when the average gamer is on rather than the like peak players that got off work and they're like, boys, let's get the squad game. Let's go. <laughs> I can't imagine thinking it's little kids. What a weird, well, playing what a weird on UK mindset. Servers, my time difference was five hours. That means at 9 p.m. when I hopped on, it was already 2 a.m. for the people I was playing against. The following day when I played it new like, with my Oh, I will say like 4 a.m. Like dude after after that up until like 9 a.m straight body lobbies that's why you see like a lot of these streamers get like 0.6 lobbies but they're playing like in the middle of the night that's how they get their content a lot of the time is that they play so late that everybody's like either super super tired or like it's the only time there was to play and they just wanted to hop on for like some fun games and you're just pooping all over them. <laughs> it's so it's so sad he was already warmed up as it was the afternoon for him and most na players were just beginning to hop on after work i don't know about you guys maybe you play better super late at night or maybe you don't even need to warm up but i'm sure most of us play I definitely better play, play when wetter, up and play, not super yeah. tired. Now, you could say time zones don't make play a difference, and high ping does have disadvantages, and honestly, Absolutely. you wouldn't be completely wrong, as we don't know everyone's schedule, and there are clearly disadvantages to having high ping, as you'll find yourself getting shot while behind cover because your character's model is delayed. But basically what I'm trying to communicate is that if you're able to use high ping and time zone differences to your advantage, Okay, so like the big thing for me is like a lot of this video is just based on assumptions. It's 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 like based on assumptions that you've talked yourself into being reality. And that's the issue, like talking about the whitelist, the VPN, whatever it may be, like talking about those things specifically, it just makes me realize like you really don't know the ins and outs of what you're talking about. It's nothing against you. It's just that they, like there's a whole world of information that each one of us just don't know. When we hop into things like this, like you could have just talked about the EU server versus NA server and left out like all this information that's supposed to be attacking streamers whenever none of it was understood properly. But instead, you, you chose to do that and then added like a minute of actual content in, which feels unnecessary. I, I think this is a problem with today's day and age is that everybody just wants to get away to talk trash and build, build that like cult audience. And I think his videos are great. I just don't think it's necessary to tear down anyone else to create content. You know what I mean? His videos are so unbelievably good. I, I love the commentary based videos that are like five minutes long. Oh, it's so great. But if you want to go check out his content for free, always in the description down below. Subscribe to my channel too, because I, I would love to have you here. And we have some crazy Warzone content coming for Warzone 2, baby.